Welcome to Limitless, the blind beginnings podcast where seeing things differently inspires limitless possibilities. This podcast is being brought to you by Blind Beginnings, an organization based in Vancouver, Canada, that supports children and youth who are blind or partially sighted, along with their families. Limitless was created in order to inform, educate, entertain, and share stories from within the blind and partially sighted community, in order to show the world that the opportunities for those who are blind or partially sighted are truly limitless. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to your host, the executive director and founder of Blind Beginnings, Sean Marcelet. Welcome back to Limitless, the Blind Beginnings podcast. I'm your host, Sean Marcelet, and I am so excited for today's episode. We are celebrating. Today is, it's the one year anniversary of the launch of our podcast, and I'm really excited to introduce some people that have joined me to celebrate this. We have Colby, Nika, Ishita, and Rob, who is usually the one editing these podcasts. So welcome, guys. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having us. Well, Thank hello you. there. Uh, it looks really weird from this side of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You don't get to sit over here very often. But I thought it was important for you to be part of this because you and I are probably the only people that have actually listened to every single or I shouldn't say listen to. You've listened to every single episode. <laughs> I've listened to most, but definitely taken part in all of them. So we have... We have a perspective to share today. Are you guys ex as excited as I am? This is pretty exciting. I'm yes. super excited. I've been waiting to record this for like the last few weeks now. I know. <laughs> so great. All right. Let's remind our listeners who you are. Um, maybe just introduce yourselves. And uh, if you want to include today a couple of episodes you've been part of, in your introduction, I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, Nika, why don't you go first? Hi, I'm Nika. I'm 20 years old and my vision condition is Peter's anomaly. So most of my vision is in my left eye and I can see colors, shapes, but have trouble seeing finer details. And a few episodes that I've been a part of um, are the one where we interviewed Amy and um, the very first Ask Abby episode, the um, talking about culture and diversity, and also the congenital versus adventitiously blind. Awesome. And also your dance teacher and dance volunteer joined us for that episode too. Yeah, I'll get kind of get into more into that later as well. Oh, sorry, were you trying to save that one? Spoilers, <laughs> spoilers, everybody. Oops. <laughs> um Colby hi I'm Colby I am 24 and my vision condition is gen genetic and it's called Alstrom syndrome I have no uh, vision currently but I did before I have recorded um a few episodes um some of my favorites I would say definitely the Ask Abby ones the um, jamming with Juggy, music in interview, the Christmas, uh, there was a special Christmas one that we released. Awesome. And Ishita. Hi, everyone. My name is Ishita, and I am 20 years old, and I have a condition called Conrad dystrophy, which primarily affects my central field of vision. So I see with my peripheral vision, which is generally kind of blurry, so I can see big shapes and uh, colors fairly well, but I have issues with seeing finer details. Um, and a few episodes that I have been in is, I would say, uh, my first episode was the iOS versus Android. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And I think we had some great discussions. Um, I was in the volunteering episode where Clement, another co-host, uh, another youth volunteer, and I talked about volunteering opportunities. And a uh, kind of recent one was when um, another youth leader, Jill, and I interviewed Sean and Lavette about um, being a blind mother. So that was really cool because we got to be in the host seat that time and Sean was being interviewed for that one. So we recently um, listened to the first episode again and I was just, I don't know, wanted to reflect back on that, like how far we've come and can you believe it's been a year and you know, is it what you expected? Is it different than you expected? 
Any thoughts? I thought, I mean, I can't believe it's been a year. It seems like it's gone by so fast. Um, I think it's also really awesome that we've um, managed to keep keep releasing episodes. Um, I know the beginning, I think we said we were going to do it like every other week. Yeah. And we've been doing it every week. I know. So that's pretty cool. We, um, we never did. Uh, uh, we never had a two-week break. Yeah, it's so funny. A week. You know? Yeah. Um, and also just how much better we sound now with everyone's experience. Like at first, I think, especially for me, I was so nervous and my voice was really shaky, but now, um, I'm way more confident. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember for that episode, I'm pretty sure I had to redo my intro, like three or four times yeah because I was so not used to it I was used to doing camera stuff and video stuff but never a podcast and also just the audio quality has improved so much since then as well well it's funny you should mention that because I went through quite (laughs) an obsession (laughs) with making my sound better I tried several different mics I was creating blanket forts to kind of try to make my sound not so echoey um eventually had to get some help from some techie people and a donation of a better mic and a bunch of things so yeah shout out to Ryan for helping me with my sound um now I'm pretty satisfied but it took weeks to be satisfied Rob what do you think as you reflect back well, first of all, I have to say that I really do miss those blanket forts. Uh, it, was always, <laughs> it was always nice to, uh, to see at every recording. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I, I agree with everything that everybody has been saying. Um, but I also really just like the atmosphere of that episode. It was still really new. Everybody was really excited. And there was this energy that comes out of that episode when you listen to it. That, that I really liked and, and as well as just comparing where, where everybody was then and where everybody is now is, is just, it's really neat to see. Um, and that's one of the things that, that's one of the unique perspectives that I have having edited every, every episode is that I've really been able to listen to how everybody's grown over time and, and how you can just tell the confidence that has that has come out of getting a couple recordings under your belt and getting used to the format and even the format of the show coming together slowly but surely over you know many many episodes um you know i'm like you guys i can't believe a year has gone by so fast as well and and you know i was editing the show yesterday this week's show yesterday and uh you know i blew me away I'm, I'm episode 52 it's like 52 we've done 52 of these things we've we've talked to 52 different people and about 52 different things and you know that's that's really really incredible so um i'm i'm incredibly proud to be involved with the, the show and really proud of you guys because you guys are just uh, doing an incredible job it's been so fantastic i i have said to multiple people that i think this podcast is the highlight of COVID for me. Not that COVID probably comes with a ton of highlights for most people, but this is my sourdough bread. This is my creative outlet, my new project, and it's been so fun. Ishita, you kind of joined us. You weren't around for the first episode. Um, Did you listen to the podcast before you started co-hosting? I did. So um, I guess I could give like a listener's perspective for the first half because I I joined in January. So um, I remember getting sent the first episode of the podcast. I'm just like, what is this? Like, I know Blind Beginnings, but I did no idea that there was a podcast available. So I listened to it and I'm just like, this is amazing. I I can't believe that they're actually like doing a podcast because I am a huge fan of podcasts in general. I've been for like a few years now. So I'm like, I love Blind Beginnings. I love podcasts. This is a match made in heaven. I love it. I'm going to listen to every episode. 
and I did. Um, <laughs> and there were so many moments where I was thinking, and I think this also really um, pushed me to join because I've always wanted to join Blind Beginnings, but um, unfortunately with time constraints, I've never been able to. But I guess also COVID kind of, you know, everybody's at home. I had a bit more free time. So I'm like, I really love the podcast. And I think, Sean, you remember when I joined youth training, I'm like, I want to do the podcast. That's like, I remember like saying it. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Doesn't matter if anybody doesn't let me. I'm going to somehow get myself on the podcast because I loved it so much. So um, I thought it was an incredible project and I can't believe how far it's come. And the fact that I can actually... Um, listen to myself on the podcast. I have a little bit of trouble of listening to my own voice, not a huge fan of that, but I love uh, everything that's been done, the people that we've interviewed and the episodes personally that I've been able, like I've had the privilege to be a part of. Uh, I just love it all. I got to say, um, we're going to get into like, you know, what some of our favorites and some of the most, the ones we were most nervous about and the ones that we feel have the biggest impact and all of that. But I also wanted to kind of just thank our listeners um people have reached out to me over the year and sent emails or just mentioned that they're listening and it's so i just so appreciate it's, it's always a surprise every new person that lets me know that they listen to my podcast i have a couple friends in scotland that are listening which i just love and yeah, it's just so encouraging to get these emails. I've I've received emails from parents who are raising children who are blind, who have said how great the podcast is and how much they've learned by listening to all of our young people that are co-hosting and all of our guests. So keep listening and sharing and and just thank you. Thank you for letting us know that you're enjoying what we're doing. Okay, so... Favorite episode to record? Okay, I'll go first. Um, <clears throat> so I said interviewing Joey Stuckey. I think he was just very easy to interview because he and Joey Stuckey is a blind musician. And uh, from where? Aiken, Georgia? Ma Aiken, Georgia. Called? Yeah. And uh, he produces music and performs music and he just talked like he was I didn't have to I could just sit back and listen to him. It was easy. So I appreciate that. Um, the Mother's Day episode for me, because I didn't have I didn't host that one. So I got to just be a guest, which was kind of fun. And I think the orientation and mobility episode where we were talking about the orientation aspect of mobility, kind of how do you figure out where you are in space um, when you're blind? So and that was my fav one of my favorites because I I just uh, well, one of my friends was a guest and I really respect and enjoy her and it was awesome to have her and uh it was just a fun one. And I really, I'm kind of very curious about the topic. So that was great. Um, for me, some of my favorite episodes to record are just the ones where we all kind of just are a small group and just have the conversations. So one of them is our holiday episode we recorded, just because I think the holiday season is one of my favorite times of the year. And I also got to talk a bit about um, a cultural celebration and I love sprinkling in kind of parts of my cultural identity and things another one was iOS versus Android because of course I like the controversy um, but you know truth be told it was a really I think educational and informative discussion and I did learn a lot and it was just so cool to hear different perspectives and one that we recorded very recently was the cultural diversity episode, just because for me, intersectionality is super important and something that I've been doing more research about in the past few months. And I also really enjoyed learning about other cultures as well, directly from, you know, people who are in the community. Uh, I would say, well, a couple of them already been mentioned, but uh, I would say my top three are the Mother's Day episode as well, because um, we got to interview Sean and Lavette, and that was a really incredible experience, just getting to hear about their children and getting to hear what their experiences of a blind mother is like. Um, and it was like a reverse card that we pulled where we got to host, and that was really cool for me. I was uh, a little bit nervous going into it, um, but I was just so excited to to sit in that host, uh, the host chair, and 
and get to facilitate some conversations. So I really love doing that. I would say uh, the other one that I really love is the volunteering episode because um, I, uh, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, volunteering uh, in in different positions and and kind of just around in my school and other places, but getting to speak um, and hopefully inspire some young youth uh, about possible volunteering opportunities that are out there and how volunteering can lead to a paid position as, as it did for Sean and Clement and I who hosted the podcast. Uh, so that was, uh, that was really cool. And I would say my third favorite, uh, was the iOS and Android as well. That was my first episode. And, um, I thought the conversations was really great. Um, I had gotten to know Nika, Clement and John outside of blend beginnings a little bit. And, um, I just getting us all together and having that conversation, I felt like it flowed really naturally. And I got to learn a lot about Androids that I had no idea about. Um, and I just thought the conversation was so interesting and I really enjoyed being a part of that environment. Awesome. What about you, Colby? Um, so like Nika, I really enjoyed um, the holiday episode that we recorded. For me, um, it was really cool to learn about other um, other people's traditions or like cultural things that they do during the holidays. Christmas and the holidays is like one of my favorite times of the year. So that was really fun to record. Um, it was really fun to record the um, episode on guide dogs. That was cool because because I have a guide dog. I thought it was really impactful for me that I got to share um, my experiences with you and and the two co-hosts that we had. Both you and I, I think, had similar experiences, and so that was really fun to t- discuss and. My other favorite, I guess, would have to be the one that we did recently. Um, that will, I guess, will be coming out. It's already come out. The it came one? out today. No, or, no. Oh, God, um, sorry. The advocacy one. Yes, came out today. Yeah, that came out today. Um, that, I thought that was really fun to um, record. And just because it's so important, I think, for everyone. Um, and it was great to see the different ways. Um, so Nika and Clement were also on that call and, um, just different ways that we all have to advocate for ourselves and whether it is positive or negative, um, just the whole experience I think is really important for everyone to know. So Rob, I'm curious for you sitting there listening to us as we chatter on while the recordings are happening is there any that you were you've been like I don't know excited to be I mean there's probably some that are more interesting than others do you have a favorite that we've recorded yeah I'm, well yeah I mean I, I have I, I do have a lot of favorites um in terms of the recording uh, that orientation and mobility one I, I remember just being just sitting listening to the recording of that and just being so engrossed in the conversation because it was just, it was so interesting that I I was just for, I was forgetting that I was even what I was doing. Like Mm -hmm. I was really engrossed in that episode. So so I think that that would, that one would be near the top of the list um, for me. Favorite to listen to. I don't think I'm going to answer this because I feel like favorite to listen to should probably be one you're not in. (laughs) And since I'm in every single episode, it's kind of hard to (laughs) say favorite to listen to. So I'm going to let you guys answer this. What are, what are, what have been your favorite episodes to listen to? Well, for me, I really enjoyed the um, one, I think it was let's meet Mac um, the mm-hmm. downhill skier. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really fun to listen to. Um, and so interesting on like what he does and yeah, just everything like that. I thought it was really fascinating. I also really enjoy the, um, winter sports one that we did. Um, that was really fun. I thought I could relate a lot because some of those activities I do, and it just kind of got me, in the mood or like reminiscing about those activities that I really like to do. Another one that I really liked was probably the Mother's Day one. That was really good. 
for me, one of my favorites to listen to was the Harry Potter episode. And I am a huge Potterhead. I love the books and I'm subscribed to multiple Harry Potter podcasts. So kind of just having an Harry Potter episode with Limitless, I think was really cool. And that I love the conversation and I was totally nerding out to that. <laughs> um, and another one I really liked was actually having uh, Amanda LeDuc on the podcast. I love the conversation about language and disability and kind of how to word things just because that's something that really resonated with me. I also found just talking about her books and hearing like you and Ginny interview her talking about her books was so interesting. Having a real author on the podcast and my last favorite would be the dating episode, just because I love kind of the flow of the conversation and how natural it sounded and hearing everyone's story. So uh, this is hard to choose because I love so many of them, but I would say top three definitely go to the o &M episode. Um, similar to Rob when I, so essentially when it came out and that one, I had listened a little bit later in the day, which I usually don't do. I usually listen to it as soon as it comes out, but I'm <laughs> a little busy with some stuff. And I got a message, uh, from Clement and he's like, you're going to love this episode. Listen to it. And I, you know, I started playing and I'm like, Oh, oh and I'm really cool. But then I just lost myself into it. I usually do work while I'm listening to the podcast episodes, but I just sat there still because I was so interested in the perspectives that were being brought up and I just love that episode so much so I'm really um really happy that we did that uh another one is the Ask Abby volume three I love all the Ask Abbies but I think this one is so adorable this is I believe one of the uh was it the second grade class mm -hmm. was asking the questions to the youth leaders and I it just warmed my heart I think I was having a little bit of a not so great day that day and I listened to it and I just could not stop smiling after that so I really loved that it was really adorable um and another one this is a bit of an older one this is episode seven I believe where we talk about um blindness in tv shows and media huh. um I thought that was a really interesting episode because I have thought about um you know this topic before personally and having um the youth leaders at the time talking about it uh, it was really cool, and I really uh, loved the perspectives that were brought forward, and um, it was a great episode. Rob, do you have a favorite oh, to I've, listen to? I have several. <laughs> I have several, too. Um, yeah, I, I have to agree with with uh, Nika. I, I loved the the episode with Amanda LaDuke. I thought that was uh, really, really interesting um, and, and a fascinating topic. Um, I also really liked the dating one. I thought that was in incredibly interesting. Um, and and it, it was, again, one of those episodes that just felt natural. It just went really conversational. And it just sounded like you guys were just talking and sharing different experiences. And I, I guess my only regret about that particular episode is that I, I just wish there had been a, a guy that... You, you know what I mean? Like to get to get sort of yeah. that that other perspective, having a, a combination of a sighted and a blind partner and how that dynamic works. Um, really, really interesting stuff. And I have to give you guys kudos for that, too, because you're, you guys are discussing, you know, pretty personal stories um, on a podcast with people from Scotland. <laughs> so, and the other one that I really, really enjoyed listening to and and have gone back to actually was the one where we where uh it was actually ishita and uh jill talking about accessibility in university mm -hmm. um because that triggered a bunch of different emotions in me i mean on the one hand i thought it was it was really sweet hearing the, the experience that they had with with megan um, but on the other hand, it just enrages me the fact that like the lack of accessibility in post-secondary institutions. And it's a real problem that, um, needs to be, needs to be worked on. So I always love, I always love episodes like that that just gets my, my blood going. <laughs> okay. Let's talk most nervous to record. So I was very nervous to, uh, record the podcast with Amanda LaDuke, the author. This was somebody that 
uh, I hadn't heard of before. And when the idea was pitched, I read two of her books before I interviewed her. But then I kind of put her on this really high pedestal because she was a published author. And yeah, it was uh, it was awesome. But it was I was nervous. Um, I was also nervous to interview Tyler Marin. So he is a blind um, personal trainer that has created this app called Revision Fitness for people who are blind to work out. And that was in our early days. And he was kind of the first person that I interviewed that I didn't know previously. And I had watched a YouTube video of his prior to like right before recording. So I just I was intimidated. Um, and I guess the, the, the big one is the very first episode as excited as I was, it was also, I was very nervous, like, well, I don't know how to do this and is it going to work out and what are people going to think? And you're kind of putting yourself out there. So those are mine. For me, the, f- this was actually the first episode that I felt besides the first episode, this was the first episode that I felt very nervous to this record one that with- we're recording right now. Uh, well, this one, yes, but uh, I'm not going to count this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, um, but actually the Giving Tuesday episode, mm. just because there have been a few episodes I've kind of realized that I've been on that um, I got more vulnerable, but that was the first one. Mm-hmm. And that one, I was so nervous to record just because I felt like that got pretty deep and I was so worried about saying the wrong thing. Um, it's actually one of my favorite episodes now but I was really nervous at the time another one was the Joey Stuckey interview just because I was so starstruck I was so nervous about meeting him we actually got on the zoom call a few minutes before him and I was like telling Sean Sean I'm nervous like what do I say what if I say the wrong thing and I loved hearing his story as well Mm -hmm. and then the last one which really really kind of struck my nervousness for me was the mental health episode just because as much as I want to start talking about my mental health more and think it should be discussed I was also nervous because this podcast is going to be on the internet forever and anyone can find it like my future employer could I don't know stumble upon this and find out that I have anxiety and depression and it was just a lot and it was like it's this permanent mark that's on the internet Mm, yeah that takes a lot of courage to to talk about that right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I have to say I I love that episode Mika you did a phenomenal job and oh uh, thank you incredible (laughs) I just wanted to say that you did not sound nervous at all in my opinion but I I genuinely love that and um uh I would say uh, it, this will come up again in another category, I'm sure, for the mental health one. But um, so for my most nervous ones that I was uh, for recording uh, has to be my first episode for sure. Um, I was really nervous because, again, you know, it was my first episode. I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, I was uh, texting Clement and Nika and being like, uh, what, what am I supposed to do? How is this going to go? And they were really re- reassuring and comforting, saying, oh, it's going to be fine. You're going to do great. Um, but I worry about everything all the time. So I was very stressed going into it. But I think once we started talking, it got so much better. And I just felt like I was talking with friends and um, it made it so much easier for me. So ended up being really great, but I was definitely nervous going into that one. Um, the other one would be the Mother's Day episode as well. Um, that one for me, because it was a new role, I was a definitely more confident in myself uh, as a co-host, but it was hosting this one. Um, and I, I remember talking to Jill at like midnight the night before and being like, how are we going to do this? We were like planning it out and she really made things a lot easier on me as well because we had a good plan going into it and she was a phenomenal co-host and we had amazing guests for that one. Uh, Sean Lovett. It was it was an incredible uh, episode, I think. Um, and my third one would have to be the interview with Jenny Bovart, because that was uh, the first one that I was uh, hosting just alongside Sean myself. So um, and I was really nervous to meet her because I uh, just I like you know researched a bit about her, but um, I wanted to understand you know I want to learn more about her and asking her the questions that I had I was really nervous because I'm like, is this too much? I want to know. I was just personally so invested in learning about her and her experiences of being partially sighted. And I had just so many questions. So I was just like bursting with energy and nerves for that episode. 
This is so fun as we go through this, just remembering all the episodes. I love this. Colby, what about you? Um, so I would have to say definitely the first episode. Um, I was really nervous because I was very unsure what would what it was going to be like and um I definitely remember like stumbling a lot and having to record or having to like redo redo my um introduction and things like that a bunch of times yeah then I would probably say interviewing um Jackie um I was pretty nervous about that because I felt like like that was the first one that I did that there was no other co-hosts I wanted to make sure like I was doing everything right. And I guess also the one that we recorded not too long ago, um, Deafblind Awareness. I was really excited to record that one. Um, But at the same time, I was nervous because I am deafblind and I recognize that. But at the same time, I feel um, almost a little bit like not quite right. Because I'm not, I don't really fit like the typical deafblind person um, because I have hearing and I did have vision. Um, And I think most people, when they think of somebody who's deafblind, they assume the person is completely um, deaf and completely blind. And because I'm not like that, I just feel like, I don't really represent the community as well as maybe somebody else could. Mm. So that's why I was a little bit nervous with that one. But we did talk about how it doesn't always mean that, like it could be somebody partially sighted and hearing impaired as well. I actually didn't know that before listening to that episode. So you actually kind of helped educate me as well. And it shows how much you know, just because I'm a person with a disability, it doesn't mean that I don't have misconceptions about other disabilities. Totally. Yeah. (laughs) Rob, do you, were you nervous about any, I feel like this is more of a, like when we've pitched ideas, maybe have you been like, Oh boy, guys, I don't know. Cause you're the podcast expert on this team. You've been doing this a lot longer than the rest of us. Well, actually, funnily enough, uh, because I did, I did make two appearances uh, on the show. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, okay. And so actually uh, that very first one that I did, I came on with, with Emily, our volunteer and programs coordinator. And uh, we did a little, a little uh, show about just talking about, well, I think it was kind of framed as like, here, here are the new people to blind beginnings and talking about some of the programs um, that we were offering at the time. And I remember having a conversation with Emily because Emily was very nervous. And I don't know if it if that spilled over to me and, and I sort of caught some of that. But I remember <laughs> going in going, oh, yeah, I, I'm kind of feeling a little nervous because it was just it, it felt very different. Um, and I'm, I don't know, I just wasn't used to being on podcasts. I'm used to, you know, I, I do this other podcast in my spare time as well. Um, and it's just it's a very different experience. So. Yeah, I was a little nervous. And even coming in tonight, I was a little nervous, I'll, I'll admit. So uh, it's it still happens no matter how many you have under your belt. <laughs> I was going to say, I have to say, Rob, you and Emily did amazing in that episode. I personally loved hearing it. It was refreshing to hear the new perspective and then the perspective of the staff. And uh, I, I just, I really loved that. So I, I couldn't tell you were nervous as well. Oh, yeah, you two didn't sound mm-hmm. nervous at all. Well, we appreciate that. And it's so funny because if you want to really know the secret, like we, I remember going out of that episode and me and Emily were like, this is unusable. Like we can't, and we was like, you can't. <laughs> really? You did. Can't, That's true. You, you, you can't, we can't use this. And I actually, yeah, we did advocate to Sean to be like, yeah, we don't think that this is an actual usable episode. We should probably <laughs> just. You just, thought we should redo it. Yeah. And I was like, it was good. It was fine. <laughs> this is like the cool things kind of you know, being on the other side from the recording perspective and the listener's perspective. And I'm really fascinated by it. (laughs) Well, and that happens a lot. You know, um, a lot of times you'll, you'll get out of a recording and think that was terrible. That was just a dog's breakfast. Like that's unusable. But then you, you start the edit and you realize you're listening to it again with a sort of a different pair of ears. And, you know, you make some some trims and tweaks and cuts, and 
it just, it turns into something completely different and you have a completely different outlook on it. Um, and yeah, a lot of times, yeah, shows just, just magically sort of just turn out. And sometimes they even turn out like a hundred times better than you thought they would. Well, They're... you also are very good at wielding your magic. Like there were some episodes mm-hmm. where I was like, okay, not even Rob can fix this. Like this is, I don't know what this is going to be. And then yeah. listening to it, it's like, okay, yes, we have Rob. We are saved. <laughs> I, I can't even count the amount of times that I've had to say, I'm sorry, Rob, the, for the amount of work you're going to have to do for this, just because of how many times we've messed up. It, it's, yeah. it's, you work your magic and it's amazing. It's okay, guys. It's job security. Just keep, keep making those mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I, there have been multiple times when I have emailed Rob after and said, that part where I say, blah, 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 cut that out, okay? And like, I, I can second guess myself at, like, why did I say that? And I'm so grateful that I've got the inside scoop to be able to <laughs> just <laughs> make it go away. <laughs> I know, you know, you listen to those people who do live podcasts and I don't know how they do it. Like, no kidding. I would, that, I could not do that at all. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about, um, the most impactful to record. You want to go first, Nika? Yes, I do. So one of the ones that really impacted me was actually the third Ask Abby episode with Mrs. Cote's class, just because I felt so connected. I mean, it's one thing to, you know, record episodes where someone is reading questions that were sent in, and that was a lot of fun as well. But actually hearing like the people's voices and having a voice to connect the question to, I think, made me feel really connected and really made it interactive which I love the next one would be the dance episode just because there are very few things that I will outwardly be prideful and protective of but my dance story is one of them and it's something that really really means a lot to me so being able to share that was amazing and I'm really grateful that Haley and Sue my volunteer and ballet instructor were able to come on the show Um, My third one actually was the flash mob episode, just because the flash mob is something that I feel like I've mentioned, actually looking back, I've mentioned the flash mob multiple times on the podcast. And that's just because I love it so much. And it was something that really shifted my mindset when I was a teenager and kind of did it at the perfect time when I needed it the most. And this is a bold and maybe outlandish claim, but I think the podcast Flash Mob and Youth Leadership Training are probably my top three like favorite programs that impacted me the most. And they're my favorite and I love them so much. Oh, oh shucks. Thanks, Nika. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for me, I would say I thought that the most impactful to report um, for my number one, definitely um, the Let's Talk About Deaf Blindness Awareness. Um, I thought that that was really impactful for a lot of people just to learn and um, gain knowledge. And that's one thing that I really like to do. So I thought that that was a really great podcast. And um, since we had Linda Mamer on it, it was really good. And she was she's always great at um, speaking about death blindness. And then my second... I would say um, advocacy one that would be impactful to episodes before this one. So easy to find for those who are listening. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Ishta? Um, I would say so top three first would go to the interview with Jenny Bovar because um, I hadn't really spoken to many other people who were partially sighted. Um, at least to a similar degree of my vision. So getting to speak with her was just super reassuring to me. Um, I learned that my experiences were valid and, you know, I'm not the only one that that feels this way when so and so, you know, something happens and I was able to laugh with her about, you know, uh, low vision moments. Uh, and she talked about her podcast as well, which I, I really love listening to as well, but, um, I just, I love getting to speak with her and I was so grateful for the opportunity to getting to interview her. So that personally had a really big impact on me as well as getting to talk about, uh, blindness being a spectrum. I think we really, uh, got to dive into that as well, because I personally never 
felt growing up that I was a part of the blind community. I thought I had this really um, outsider perspective of blindness is just when you are and you have no vision. But uh, I've learned over the years that that is not the case. Uh, it is a spectrum. And I proudly say that I'm part of it. And uh, that conversation with Jenny just um, uh, helped me accept it more. And it was just wonderful for me. Um, the other one is the university student conversation that we had with Megan and Jill. I thought um, it was an idea that I proposed with Jill. I'm like, I think we should talk about this because when I met Jill, um, we met at our university and it was so different, our, our experiences within our accessibility center. And, you know, we talk about it on the podcast, so I highly recommend listening to it. Um, but I thought the contrast was so interesting. And like Rob says, it highlights um, the wonderful aspect of getting to work with Megan, but it also highlights the uh, unfortunately negative aspects of not getting the support that we need in certain post-secondary um, institutions not living up to what they should be. So that one is a really impactful episode for myself. And the third one was the um, disability and culture episode that we did not too long ago. Uh, I just was in awe listening to all of everybody's perspectives. Um, we had uh, such a diverse group there. You know, we had three people from the same culture, Ginny, myself, and Jagad, but our perspectives and our experiences were so different. And I loved hearing that. So I just personally, you know, took a moment afterwards and I was done with that episode. I'm just like, God, this is so wonderful that we have the space to talk about this. And um, hopefully people are listening to this conversation and we can impact someone somewhere out there. So I thought that was a really impactful episode as well. Okay. So my most impactful to record, um, I think the interview with Amanda LaDuke, um, one of the things when I was reading one of her books, I sort of, she talks about identity first language uh, regarding people with disabilities or disabled people. And it really just kind of, I connected with that because I, I've always sort of talked about myself as being blind, being a blind woman, a blind mom, working with blind children. And a part of me has felt like, am I being disrespectful because I'm not using person first language? And, and there's this whole other way of, of the identity first language. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So that was really empowering for me. Um, the episode we, where we interviewed Priscilla, who's a judo athlete and her guide, it, I didn't know anything about judo. And sometimes when we talk about a, a particular sport it, we can get kind of caught up in the details and not really sure how it's going to land. But this episode was really a lot more about the relationship between Priscilla and her guide, her sighted guide, and how they train together and traveled together and lived together. And Priscilla talked about burning out friends. And that really hit home for me, um, something I worry about a lot. Like if I ask too much of somebody, am I going to burn them out? Are they going to get you know, kind of fed up with having to help me too much and, and how Priscilla never felt like, like she was burning out Allie. Allie gave just the right amount of help. And I think, I don't know, it's just really encouraging to hear relationships like that, that work that are positive. And it reminded me of my own relationship with um, one of my tandem pilots that, you know, I went to the Paralympics with and just have so much respect for and, that was a pretty fabulous relationship too. So that was definitely impactful. And um, the one you just mentioned, Ishita, the accommodations in university. And I think again, it was, it was Megan. It was how, how she was so creative, how she like was excited to figure out how she could make things accessible, mostly to Jill in her publishing class, you know, really visual, uh, subject where there's lots of kind of like visual layout that she had they had to work through and how she problem solved that and the strategies she came up with and how it's I just it's so lovely when you meet people who are willing to kind of go that extra mile to make it meaningful and to make it work for somebody who's visually impaired so that was also fabulous. Actually, going back to the Amanda LaDuc episode, I remember texting you right after listening to it saying that Sean, the person first and identity first language conversation resonated with me so much. I preferred disability first language and it was so cool to have it validated. Mm -hmm. Totally. Okay. How about most impactful to listen to? 
Um, so I found the um, the one talking about uh, where you interviewed uh, Candace Maria and mm, yes, um, Jagger. Yeah. Yes. Um, I found that one really interesting. Um, I thought that was a it was really great to see the perspective of parents and the program that you offer to parents. Um, I thought that was really impactful as well. Um, and then also on um, the one about dating, I would say that was really impactful for me because um, I've often wondered like how some relationships work. And um, I mean, I have some experience, but it was really great to hear from um, some of the other people Um their experiences and whatnot. Mm -hmm. God, there's so many, uh, like Colby was saying. Um, <laughs> I would say the mental health one, like I was mentioning before, um, it was so just amazing to listen to because I think, you know, we are living in a time, especially with the pandemic, in a mental health crisis. So um, I think getting to hear about Nika's experiences personally just made me feel um, so much more comfortable to talk about any any sort of experiences that I have had, or I hope it is it inspired other people and it made it clear that it is okay to talk about mental health. It should not be stigmatized and it should be a conversation that we should be continuously having. Um, I'm a psych major you know, in university right now and mental health is such an important aspect of, of just what I want to do in my life as a career. And um, I'm so grateful that Nika, you... Um, did that episode and Sean that you posted that episode and uh, I just I can't say how much it means to me that we got to talk about that topic I have to say the deaf blindness one Colby that one was uh, really impactful to me because I personally hadn't met anyone else that was deaf blind and uh, like Nika was saying it taught me that again it's there's not uh, a one size that or uh, like a one this is what it has to be it is a spectrum similar to how blindness is in the community so I learned so much personally from that one um, and again I thank you for sharing your experiences I thought that was uh, wonderful um, and no problem the last one I keep going back to it but it's the O&M uh, episode because I thought um, it was so so incredibly interesting to listen to and it brought forward such uh such differing and uh interesting experiences that people have had in um, with O&M I think you know most uh, some of us or most of us have had experiences with an O&M but it's so different and it, again it, you learn how people um, navigate O&M with different um, lev like levels of vision or other it also brought into the uh, cognitive aspect of it as well which I thought was super interesting I just I love learning about that because I'm, I'm a nerd so I, I just kind of geeked out about that when, when I was listening to it so um, I really love that episode as well. Also with the O&M episode that was impactful and kind of going back to what I said just because I'm disabled doesn't mean I know everything because I didn't know that mental mapping was an issue. I didn't know that that was a thing that people struggled with. And I found it super educational and I learned something new. Another one was the Braille episodes, both part one and two, just because Braille is really important to me. And I think we're kind of moving towards a more technological kind of way of doing things in school. And it makes me really sad that Braille is potentially being kind of pushed to the wayside and maybe isn't used as much as it was when I was in elementary school, using it constantly. And I just found myself agreeing with every single thing that was said in those episodes. And I just want to keep it alive and, you know, keep it as an option just because I find it super empowering to actually read Braille and be able to read it independently and just prove to people that, you know, like, I'm literate and Starbucks brought braille menus and that was really exciting for me. And another episode that was impactful was the blind moms episode with Sean and Lavette, just because hopefully in the very far future, I do hope to be a parent and listening to stories like this just gave me so much hope that it's possible to be, you know, a great mom and still have a visual impairment. And I love just hearing these 
firsthand experiences and it gave me a lot of comfort just knowing that you know I'll be okay and have a support system and everything you know I'm totally capable of doing this just like anyone else can yes Okay, I just have to backtrack to what you were saying about Braille, because I know if Adam Wilton was here, he would be screaming, no, (laughs) Braille's not being pushed to the side. And yes, it's still important. And it's still going to be and kids are still going to learn Braille and technology will not replace it. So just had to put that disclaimer in there. Don't worry, Nika. It's not going away. <laughs> I know he would say that if he was here. Yeah, that that makes me really happy to hear. Good. <laughs> okay, Rob, what were your most impactful episodes? You know, this is this is such a hard category for me because even though like, you know, I edit the show every week, I, like I consider myself a listener and uh, you know, a fan of the show. Uh, as well, I just I'm lucky I get to I get to hear it in a couple different formats every week, um, <laughs> but it's it, it, it's really hard for me because for me, be impactful. I get the biggest impact when I learn something or when I hear about a different perspective. And really, every single week, I find that I'm learning something or I'm hearing a story from a different perspective that. I, you know, I don't know anything about. And so I, I love them all. And w- the other the other downside of going last is that you guys have picked a lot of the ones that I would have certainly have picked. So I'm going to I'm going to throw a couple a curveball and throw a couple other episodes in that haven't been mentioned. But uh, the siblings episode, I loved that episode. It was so relaxed. It was conversational. The siblings were joking around and it was so interesting hearing the stories of what it was like to grow up together. Um, the other episode, and this is this is an interesting take, the iOS versus Android show. And this is a little bit inside baseball, but when this show, when that show idea was pitched, I remember thinking, mm, that's not uh, that's I don't know if that's going to work. You know, who's we don't nobody really talks about iOS versus Android anymore. And I was very. It was very curmudgeonly, and I was just like, well, I don't think that's that's going to work. And we recorded it, and everybody knocked it out of the park. It was a great episode, and it just reminded me. I was just like, you know what, Rob? You don't know everything, and sometimes <laughs> having, having other ideas and other perspectives is a good thing. You know, I'll say that, too. That's the other thing that I love about the show. I love how collaborative the the whole experience is and maybe we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that l- more later perhaps um, but we we have all these different perspectives and we have show ideas coming from all different sides and I think that that's a real strength of the show as well um, that we have so many voices involved in it. One of the other reasons I love that episode is because the conversation we had afterwards Sean if you remember um, where it spawned a joke between John and every, like you know, everybody that was there. Where Sean was talking about how she doesn't like the, uh, or she said she proposed a question where she's like, "Does it ever happen when you go to the bathroom that the phone falls out of your pocket?" <laughs> and um, and yes. John Clement said no, and I said, "Well, that's because you have dude pants." Oh, and yes. everybody yes. lost their mind, and they're just like, "What is dude pants?" And I was, I think, just <laughs> on like adrenaline was like coursing through me because I wasn't thinking properly and I'm like you know guy pants right like dude dude <laughs> pants that's what I mean because the pockets are longer and <laughs> women's jeans pockets don't have it only in the back and when you pull it down it falls I'm like that's what happens and I think like we just laughed for like 10 minutes after uh, that and uh it right. was it was a lot so that was like a blooper and an insider info there. that's awesome <laughs> yeah the inside jokes also mm-hmm. insider information I forgot we have about a messenger that. group um, we're oh going yeah! To talk about podcast ideas, and John totally changed his nickname to Dude Pants. Yeah, <laughs> yes. anytime he talks in the uh, sorry in the group chat now, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. I said that. <laughs> that was a, something that I said. Okay, so we came up with. Um, Everybody submitted their top five or six recommended podcasts. So if you are new to listening to the Limitless podcast, 10 episodes, or we compiled, we each submitted five or six of our, the ones we thought we should, rec- we would recommend. And then I compiled them all and I have a top 10 list. I arranged them from sort of the earliest to the, the most recent 
um, rather than kind of which one was recommended most or it, cause, cause most of them, most of them were recommended by at least two people in our group here today and some even more than that. So, all right. So first one, um, episode one, why we made a podcast. If you want to kind of hear the reasons for why we made a podcast and what our intentions were, you could listen to that. Uh, episode seven, blindness in TV and media. I think mm. that was a really interesting conversation about how blindness is represented in the media or not represented. Um, I had a really interesting conversation about that. Mm-hmm. Episode 23, let's meet Priscilla and Ali. And that was the episode about judo, which I highly recommend. Episode 29, Ask Abby, Volume 3. So this was the grade two class that posed questions to us. And Ask Abby, Abby stands for A Blind Beginnings Youth. And uh, we are always looking for more questions in order to record an Ask Abby episode. The youth love the Ask Abbies. So if you have questions about blindness and visual impairment, send us an email to limitless at blindbeginnings.ca. And once we have enough questions, we'll record another Ask Abby Episode 30, which is Braille. Uh, I put Braille part two. I liked part two better than part one, but they're both good. So it is a two-parter, but it isn't required that you listen to both. Like one, you don't need to listen to one to, to kind of understand the other. So part two was more those of us who are Braille users talking about our lived experience. Braille one was more kind of what is Braille and how is Braille taught in schools and, and that aspect. Um, episode 35, let's talk about dating. So that was mm-hmm. a conversation about dating when you're blind and everybody was talking about their experiences with a sighted partner. So pretty interesting conversation. Um, episode 36, let's talk to Candice, Maria and Jagger. So this is a, uh, we were talking with parents who are raising children who are blind about our parent support group and, and just how that program has helped them through kind of adjusting to their, you know, realizing their child's blind or, or partially sighted episode 39. Let's meet Amanda. That's the author that we've talked a lot about episode 41. Let's talk about accessibility in university. We've mentioned that one quite a bit. Episode 44, which is the orientation and mobility episode. That one got a lot of votes. I think all of us, I think almost all of us, thought that that was one that would be recommended oh and that's the last one so that's our top 10 so if you don't have time to go back and listen to 52 episodes <laughs> we recommend those 10 to get you started let's talk no. about our our hopes for the podcast what i mean obviously i want this to continue and we're we're definitely going to continue putting episodes out there but where do we want this to go in the next year Ultimately, I think for me, it's just about helping people. That's, you know, why I wanted to do youth leadership in the first place. And I know podcasts have helped me personally. And I think just being someone that younger people can relate to, or even just people from, you know, any age and whether they are cited, you know, just educating. And I just hope like just my story can help people. And all of us are just so diverse with our experiences and getting our message out there. And I think even if we impact just one person, I think we've made a huge difference and hearing people email Sean and Sean reading kind of some people's emails to us just is so validating knowing that we're actually making a difference in someone's lives. And I think that's just, you know, there's nowhere to go, but up from here. I would have to agree with Nika. I think um, I want to see it continue um, with educating people and just giving people um, more exposure, I guess, blindness and partial sighted um, people. Um, I think that's that's really important to me as well. Just echoing what Nika and Colby said here, uh, it, our ultimate goal is to educate and impact people in a positive way. Um, I can't tell you how much it warms my heart when Sean reads us an email saying a parent or a person who listened to the podcast really loved it and it genuinely helped them. Or when I send the podcast to um, one of my friends who aren't a part of the blind community and they're like, I had no idea this is the way that this 
works. So thank you for sending this to me. I learned something new. Um, and I think I just want to explore new topics and learn new perspectives. I just, I love learning new things as much as I can. So I would love to, to tackle some really uh, interesting and new topics. So definitely send us some if you have any suggestions. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be preparing for uh, anniversary 10, 10 years. <laughs> We're going to be here for that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, we hoping will. To. I'm hoping to uh and I think all of us want that to happen so thank you to everyone that's been listening and um you guys made this happen so thank you I think for me um having so many different guests and co-hosts and like like Nika mentioned the diversity like I want to erase the stereotype of blindness of of kind of you know, what people think of when they hear the word blind. And I feel like by us one at a time, kind of showing all these different perspectives and experiences and levels of vision, we're doing that, right? We're erasing that stereotype. And we're, we're all so just because we can't see doesn't mean we're all the same. We're not at all. And our experiences are different and our interests are different. And I, I think that's my goal is just to continue to educate what about you, Rob? What are your goals or, or hopes for our podcast? Well, you know, I would echo everything that everybody has said. And and also, like, I'm, I'm excited about the next 52 shows and what those are going to be, what topics we're, we're going to talk about, uh, what people we're going to talk about. Uh, I mean, I, I think that one of the really important aspects of the show is is that educational component or that sharing of of your lived experiences with people who aren't familiar with it and really educating what you know in in our own way we're we're helping facilitate change uh that's that's desperately needed doing it from the ground up um you know sharing stories and and educating people that's how we you start facilitating change you you can't necessarily wait for the government to legislate um accessibility unfortunately it's just that that those systems are very slow to to make those changes but culturally and socially we can we can start changing that perspective and that's what really excites me and that's what i i really hope to to see is to see the the podcast grow not because you know, we, we want to go viral just because we're, you know, we want to see those big numbers. We just we want to spread the word and we want to help facilitate the, the change that that needs to happen. I mean, we kind of want to go viral, too. Well, OK, we'll do, okay, fine. We'll be both. We'll do both. OK, we'll take fame. We'll take fame. All right. And, but also the facilitating change thing as well. Right. <laughs> no, but yeah, absolutely. I'm totally joking, sort of. I, <laughs> we are paying attention to our numbers, our downloads, um, which countries people are listening to us from. And so please, if you like this podcast, please share it with somebody. And I feel like I think I don't know who our listeners are exactly beyond the ones that reach out to me. I suspect we have a lot of listeners that are already part of the blind community. We really want this to extend to people who don't know much about blindness, right? Those are the ones that we really want to reach. I mean, we want to reach everybody, but we appreciate the blind community fans as well, of course, and listeners, but yeah, share it with a friend, somebody, if you know, if there's somebody in your life that you think could benefit, please share. And you, and, you know, sorry, the, the other thing, too, that I'm excited about, too, is is hearing some new voices on the show. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've got a little bit of an of, of some new blood in the podcast committee. And yes. um, I'm excited to, to hear more people's stories. Yeah, so that's a good point. Um, our co-hosts are all youth leaders who've gone through either youth leaders or youth mentors or youth leader alumni. Uh, who have gone through our youth leadership program and uh, and want are interested in volunteering on the podcast. And we've just gone through another youth leadership training and brought in a few more that are interested in joining. So there will be some new voices coming up and some some young voices that we'll be incorporating as well. So with with all new co-hosts come new ideas and new topics and new experiences. So. Do you, Stay tuned for that. 
do you think it's too much inside baseball if we just like kind of give people a snapshot of what what the process is kind of like so yeah the way the way we decide our topics we have monthly meetings with our limitless committee and uh well usually the staff first sits down and kind of looks at the upcoming month are there any special holidays coming up that might give us an idea for a a topic. And so we come up with a little bit of a plan or sometimes we also want to promote some of our programs. So we might schedule in a podcast about one of the upcoming programs that we want to promote. And then we kind of bring that to the youth and ask who's interested in which topics. And then there's always, you know, the opportunity for youth to pitch their topics as well. So if there isn't space for topics that have been pitched that particular month, then they kind of go in the queue for the next month's podcasts. And then we try to kind of decide who's going to co-host. And then it's figuring out a date to record. And then together, myself and the co-hosts for what, for that particular episode, create a bit of a plan. You know, what, what topics are we going to hit on within that episode? If we need to reach out to a guest, if it's somebody we're going to interview, then that might be the co-host that reaches out. It might be me. It depends on kind of who pitched the idea or who knows who or, you know, who's already connected with that individual. And we try to get the guest confirmed. So there's actually quite a lot of behind the scenes organization that happens for each episode. We also have a giant Google Doc full of um, podcast and blog ideas that we pull from during the meetings as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that that's what the, one of the real strengths of the show is that there it is such a collaborative effort from a bunch of different demographics and everybody having sort of something different that they're bringing to the show or a different idea that they're pitching. I think that that's great. I think that that's that is a really unique aspect of the show and a and a really big appeal of the show because it's it's the aim is to really have something for everybody whether it's it's parents of a of a child who's blind or partially sighted or it's it's another youth that's listening that's they learning about you know Paralympic judo. I just don't I don't know of very many podcasts out there that are are doing what we're doing. Well, if you're still with us, thank you. I know this has been a long episode, but a great one because we're just so excited to celebrate this milestone. I don't know that. I don't know. I I don't remember if I thought, I don't know if I really thought about when we recorded that first episode, like that we would be here a year later, still doing this and still excited about it. So this is really fabulous. Thanks you guys for celebrating with me tonight thank you and thank you for giving us this opportunity i'm super grateful to have the honor and privilege to be part of this amazing project and i'm really excited to be on more episodes and listen to more episodes and see where it goes thanks for having us on this podcast um again i can't believe we're celebrating a year And I really look forward to recording more and listening to more podcasts and just um, can't wait to see what the future brings for everything. Yeah. Thank you to all of you listeners that that make this possible. Um, Thank you to all of the other youth leaders that volunteer alongside us and uh, give such amazing ideas and perspectives. And thank you to Sean and Rob and all of the staff at Blind Beginnings who uh, make this podcast possible as well. And just, uh, I am so honored and grateful to be a part of this incredible project. And I, like I said, I'm going to be here for the next 10 years. So I'm (laughs) excited. (laughs) Uh, any last thoughts from you, Rob, before I shut her down? Listen, thanks for, thanks for letting me work on your guys's podcast. Oh, we couldn't have done this without you. (laughs) So thank you so much. You've been listening to Limitless, the Blind Beginnings podcast. If you have a question, a comment, a future topic request, please send us an email to limitless at blindbeginnings.ca. Share our podcast with a friend, like and subscribe, leave us a rating or a comment, and please continue to join us next time. 
This podcast has been brought to you by Blind Beginnings, an organization based in Vancouver, Canada, that supports children and youth who are blind or partially sighted, along with their families. Music for this podcast is composed by Sean Bishop and Clement Chow. Production and audio editing by Rob Minot. For more information about Blind Beginnings and the work it does to support children and youth who are blind and partially sighted, along with their families, visit us on the web at www.blindbeginnings.ca and also remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time.